Hello class, we are going to be going over exercise uh, 11, specifically the information you need to complete exercise number 11 in this video. So there will be a separate video I do to show you the steps for it, but I want you to watch this video because there's a lot of information that you need to know um, that it's kind of hard to follow along in the book just because it's older. So I'm going to talk through it. So in exercise number 11, you're going to be choosing page sizes. Um, there's a lot of different ones you can choose. You're going to be messing around a little bit more with the paper settings. And then, of course, we're going to be talking about the different layout guides, how you can show them, how you can hide them, how you can change the layout guides, and, of course, how to place ruler guides as well. So those are just some basic things we're going to do. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is cho choosing your page size. Um, we've been using, as you can see here, 8.5 by 11 um, typically in our different exercises. Now, Publisher, you typically use a lot more different sizes of paper, or it'll be set up to print in different sizes than uh, on the 8.5 by 11. And so you want to know how you can do it. Now, there's a lot of different presets, and you can find those in more blank page sizes. So I click on there, and you can see there's a lot of different options. Here's all my different uh, settings I can choose. Um, they kind of set it up based upon how what you may use it for a little bit. Um, and then there's, of course, different publications types. Now we're going to look more up here um, today at these different options and then the new page size as well. Now, uh, looking at page 56 in your textbook, um, if there's no preset that matches what you want, you're going to want to choose to create a new one. So I'm going to click on that, create new page size, and you can see here I have a different, lot of different options. I can name it. Um, so you can see earlier I did a different page size one, and I just left the name there. Um, you can name it. Say you have a certain page size you're going to use more than once. So you might want to set it up that way uh, with a specific name you can choose later on. So. I can do it there. Uh, I can change the position of my margin guides. Um, so you can see that blue outline here. I can change it with just adjusting these here. And you can see too, it's very nice because it'll show you in the preview what it will look like. So the top, left, bottom, right. Um, that's very useful for you. Um, so you can change a lot of things with it. Now, uh, right now, the layout type is set to one page per sheet. and you may use that, but if you have something smaller, say like maybe a little flyer to hand out, business cards, things like that, you're going to want more than one page per sheet. And so uh, I'm going to choose here from the layout. I'll click on here and then multiple pages per sheet. And it gives me a lot more options. So you can see here it's set up with two columns of five. It's still on an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet, but my page size is only three and a half inches by two. So this might be a good business card. Uh, maybe a little flyer to hand out, so say for the play for the junior high uh, drama elective or for the senior play, a good setup. I can change my margins, what size they are on the whole um, page itself. Um, I can choose th those. And then also the gap here um, you can choose from. So there's a horizontal and vertical gap. Um, basically, it's just spacing out your pages on your piece of paper to make a difference. So. Um, if you want that extra space. So there's a lot you can do um, with the single page layout type, um, one page per sheet, multiple pages per sheet, and then also um, sometimes maybe you want to design a card for somebody or a pamphlet. And so you'll also have the folded card layout type. So here you can see the width is set up four, and a, four inches and a quarter, five inches and a half for height. Uh, I have my margin guide set up. So these are set up to half an inch. Um, you can see the little quotation marks mean it's an inch. Uh, and then, of course, I can choose which way it folds. So you can see here it's quarter fold, um, and it's folding along the longer side here. I can choose quarter sheet top fold, and you notice it folds up instead. And then, of course, I can choose half sheet as well, um, depending on what you do in the exercise. So these are um, some different options that you can use for depending on what you're making, or, of course, um, just for the exercises in general if you don't use publisher as much outside this class now that's choosing it if you can know what margin guidelines you need and the page size that you need and how it looks ahead of time that's really good it'll make it easier for you um, since we you may not uh, of course then you will have to change it in uh, the uh, while you're working on the publication itself. And so we're going to look at that as well. So I'm going to put this new size here. 
Um, let's say just example or exercise 11. I'm going to click on OK. And then, of course, I can choose the themes or schemes over here. I'm going to just click create. Uh, here it's going to ask insert pages. It's asking just because you're creating a card. So I'm going to click yes. And you can see here it's set up for my quarter fold um, and the different pages there. So that's very good. Okay, what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to talk a little bit about your printer settings. Um, choosing your printer, you go up to File, Print, and you can see the information here. I have it currently set up to the Computer Lab printer. I'm going to choose to switch it um, to Microsoft Print to PDF. And all I do to do that is click up here where it says Ready, Printer, Microsoft Print to PDF. And uh, remember, if it says now in the exercise to print, I don't want you to just skip over like we've done in the past. You need to print it as a PDF file, save it with the same name that it tells you to save the normal publisher uh, or the publication in the exercise. Um, and of course, it'll be a PDF. So this is how I can choose it here. I can choose how it's folded, as we've already said. Um, a lot of different options there. So um, that's how you can choose your printer publication setting. Um, if you need to change up it even more, I can click on printer properties. I can choose portrait, landscape, um, different options there. So, all right, and then uh, let's look out, look at the layout guides. So, uh, these are something that uh, you kind of been using a little bit already, but you actually didn't maybe know as much that you were. So, um, the margin guidelines are blue. So you can see these are the margin ones right here. Um, they're very useful. Um, you can choose how you view them or if you do view them in the view tab. Um, so boundaries, I can select here. Guides, I can get rid of my margin guides this way. Um, the rulers, I can have them appear or not. You gonna you are going to want to leave these up. I can choose to have baselines appear. We're going to talk about those here in a second. Um, but all of it's controlled from the view tab. So view tab, and then you can select along here which ones are selected. Now, if you want to adjust where they're placed, that's in a different area. I click on page design tab, and then right over here, I click on the guides button. Now, I can choose to get rid of ruler guides if I set them up, or I can choose built-in ones. So, for instance, I click here, and the green colored ones are my ruler guides. This, when you're setting up different objects, say it's a text box or a picture, um, it'll snap to my ruler guideline to help me out with how I place it. Um, so that's very convenient. Um, but uh, if I want to change, put it in manually uh, for it, I click on guides. And then also, I scroll down here and go to grid and baseline guides. Uh, and I can choose to adjust my margin guides. So here it's on two page master. I can set up how it's arranged here. I can go to grid guidelines. Uh, now, if I want to do grid guidelines, it's kind of nice because I can set up different columns. Uh, it's still kind of affecting the margins here, so I'm going to do that. And I can add rows. I can add columns. Um, this is very helpful. And, of course, my base guideline. Right now, it's set to 11-point font. This is basically so that way it looks nice and neat, and it's all set up the same way. So you can set them up here and then click OK. And now you notice here, uh, this is very detailed. You won't probably needed this detail for your exercises um, but now I can use up the same exact amount of space each time uh, that I do something here so this is baselines um, and if I want to view it I click right here so easy to set up I can see how it's gonna look um, in it and then one last thing I wanted to show you here um, as well in this video is the setting up ruler guidelines so on um, the margins just kinda help me plot it out by my eye but if I want it to snap to the ruler guidelines I have to create those one of the ways you can do that is of course you can choose the built-in ruler setup where it'll do it for you or I can do it this way go to if I want to set up a horizontal one uh, or excuse me a vertical one I go up to my horizontal ruler click drag and I can move it down and set it up this way. So there's multiple ways you can set it up, but this is one of them. So say I wanted the two inch line. Now I have this one that's going horizontally. Uh, it's going horizontally across the page. And then if I want a vertical line, I come over here, click and drag, and then I bring it to where I want it to line up. So I'm setting it up at the two inch markers, each one. And now 
when I put in an object so I'm gonna put in a text box draw it when I move it it'll naturally want to snap to it'll actually try to snap to some of my uh, margin lines here but it'll also or grid lines but I can also have it snap to my ruler lines that I had set up um, so there's a lot of convenient things that you can do um, for it if I want to get rid of the ruler guidelines all I do is click hold down drag and move it away from the page and it'll disappear as well so um, that's a lot of information for this exercise that's why I wanted to cover in this video to help you out and so now that you've looked at this go ahead and move on to the next video clip for exercise number 11 uh, where I'll walk you through doing the first part of the exercise and of course the on your own